Hi guys, in today's tutorial I'd like to show you how to turn your cross stitch into a very simple and lovely wall hanging and the same process can be applied to actually make a pillow as well, obviously without the added wall hangings at the top. This is a very simple process, it has straight lines so there's no mitered corners to worry about, just a matter of cu cutting four side strips and a backing fabric and how to put it all together. And for a cushion, obviously you would stuff the inside. My wall hanging isn't a quilted one. Um, I explained the reasons for that in the video, but obviously should you wish to make it a quilted one um, with some nice padding, I, um, I mentioned how you can look into doing that as well. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Okay guys, so the first thing you want to do is decide what fabric you're going to use um, for your wall hanging or cushion. Um, totally up to you, of course. You need to choose something that complements the design. You can choose a um, different colour panel for the front and a different colour for the back. You could choose four different colour side panels. Completely up to your own imagination and whatever you think will look good with the design. In my particular case, I just wanted something to complement the design and not take away from the actual design itself. So I chose a, a coordinating purple in just a very simple lightweight cotton. My um, piece was stitched on very stiff um, linen, so I didn't need anything um, really heavy in order for it to um, be more stable. If your design is stitched on lightweight material such as a linen and you don't plan on using any quilting in your wall hanging and you just want fabric alone, I suggest selecting a heavier type of fabric to give it that stability it will need to hang nice and, and, and straight without kinking. So you're going to need to make sure that you have enough fabric for the side panels for your design as well as the back of the design and the hangings. Um, if, you, if you're actually making the wall hanging, you'll need to make sure you have enough material to make up those hangings. Um, I'll actually put all the instructions down below as well um, to help you. So next step is trimming your design. Um, you need to figure out what sort of allowance you want around the edge of your design before your side panels are visible. I chose a one inch allowance around all four sides of my design but again totally up to you if you want more or if you want less but I like to work with one inch that's about what the framers use as well and I think it's it's just really nice placement. So once you've decided on the actual size you want to cut it you must also allow for your seam allowance on all four sides. So for example, I said mine was one inch. I had to cut it one and a quarter inches around each side. So that once all my seams were sewn, I would be left with one inch visible. And you'll hear me mention a quarter of an inch a lot in seam allowance. That is generally what I use. If you happen to prefer using a larger seam allowance, make sure you allow for that in your dimensions. So now we're up to trimming and I decided to give Tara C's technique a, a try here. In her video she suggested um, to get a completely straight line when you're trimming around a design to do it this way and I thought it'd be worth a try. I think it would have been a lot easier on a softer fabric because this is really stiff raw linen. It was it was really quite difficult to do, but I persevered with it and I'm glad I did because it just made cutting the linen so much easier. So much easier than following you know those holes and trying to get the cutting straight. But also using this technique if your fabric has distorted a little during the sewing process or washing and ironing, um, like mine did, mine actually did distort a little, but I think it was distorted before I started stitching on it, to be honest. Um, 
using this way of cutting it will actually square it up a lot better. So in this photo here, you can see that horizontal line just above my fingernails there. That is one side that I have already pulled the thread out of and that's where you can see how easy it is to then cut along that line. So in the next photo, so you can see I've made the cut here exactly where I've marked where my one and a quarter inches is from the top of my design and I've made the cut on the edge of the linen and then you just grab one of those threads and pull it and just keep pulling it until it all comes through. If it breaks off while you're pulling because it actually did for me on a couple of occasions it's just a matter of cutting along where it's been pulled out and then you can grab the, the thread again from where it broke off and then keep pulling the rest of the way. But I, I really did like this. As I said, I think it would be easier on softer fabric, but it's a great idea because you get perfectly along the grain of the fabric. So I did this for all four sides of my design and then cut through that um, groove that you can see there. And that left me with one and a quarter inches on each side of the design. So next step is to cut your side panels for the front of your design. Now at this point I want to just mention something that I did here because when I started doing this wall hanging I originally planned on doing it as a quilted wall hanging. So with, what I mean by that is with batting in between and actually with a real quilted finish with the bias binding around the edge which is hand sewn on and I cut my side panel strips to allow for the actual bias binding which would have been a quarter of an inch. When I later on decided that I no longer wanted to do it as a quilted wall hanging because I was on a time limit and I decided that you know you guys know I really don't like hand stitching so I the thought of actually hand sewing a bias binding around the edge just completely threw me off and I decided that I would finish this wall hanging without anything in between. But I'd already cut my strips and I decided just to keep going ahead with it. So unfortunately the strips aren't as wide as I would have liked them to be. But I will give you the directions for how they should be. And then if you choose to go ahead and, you know, make yours a quilted wall hanging, then you can alter those measurements to allow for the extra bias binding to go on the edge. And in this photo, you can actually see my strips that I have cut and you'll notice that they are not very straight. And that was before I actually bought a quilting ruler. And I do recommend those if any of you are interested in doing lots of these types of projects so you really need something long and straight that you can use as a guide and I have bought one now and I love it and wish I'd bought it before but um, again I was in a little bit of a rush to get this done this was an Easter project and I was working on this on Easter Sunday or Monday I can't remember now and um, it still turned out good but obviously it's not perfect and they're not perfectly straight but I'm still happy with it so firstly, figure out what type of width you want for your side panels. As I su said, um, I suggested a two inch width. I think that's quite a nice amount. And you will need to allow your seam allowances on both sides. So for a two inch width with a quarter of an inch seam allowance on each side, you will need to cut your strips two and a half inches wide. If you were doing a bigger piece and you wanted a three inch side strip, side border, you would need to cut them three and a half inches wide to allow for two seam allowances. And again, four inch, you would need to cut four and a half inches. So how long are we going to cut these strips? The information I give you now will be based on having a two inch wide strip. So if you decide on anything different to this, you will need to adjust your measurements accordingly. And I'll also give you the measurements of my actual design and the 
the actual finished design size and the length that I cut my strips so that you have something to base this against. So you need to measure the complete width of your design and with that length you need to then add on your two inch on each end for the width of your border and then I suggest another inch on each end which will allow enough for seam allowances and plenty extra um, to avoid accidentally cutting it too short and you can always trim off this excess later. For the length likewise you need to measure the length of your fabric, your design, then add on your two inch border on each end and then an additional one inch on each end as an extra. So my design size is 10 and a half inches wide by 11 inches long. So for my width it was 10 and a half inches plus two inches on each end plus an additional one inch on each end gave me a length of 16 and a half inches. So my width strips were 16 and a half inches long by two and a half inches wide. That's what I cut. And for the length um, of 11 inches, my measurements were 11 inches plus two inches on each end for the width of the border plus an additional one inch on each end which gave me a length of 17 inches. So those strips were cut 17 inches long by two and a half inches wide. And once you've cut all four panels, I recommend placing them around your design on the table just before you sew them so you can make sure that you actually have enough there that the pieces overlap slightly and that you're not gonna run out of material. I always like to double check things like this before I actually get into the sewing process and then it's much harder to go back and fix things. So it's always good to just have a look at it, make sure you have enough and then you can go on to the next stage. Now next step to make sure that you sew your pieces on perfectly even is to find the centre of each piece and match them. So as you can see in the picture here I have marked the centre mark of all four sides of my design and then I have chosen to do the top and the bottom panels first completely up to you. You could do the side panels first or the top and bottom like I have. Either way I recommend you do one and then the, the opposite side before the vertical sides. So matching the centre mark on your side panel with the centre mark on your design, pin the pieces in place with right sides of the fabric together and sew your quarter of an inch seam allowance along the site, along the edge of the design. And then repeat the same process for the other side, the other two sides of the design. In this photo here you can see where the top and bottom panel have already been stitched. You can see along the back of the uh, linen there you can see the stitching line and then I have actually pinned the side panels in place all ready for their stitching. And this time when you do your seam allowance, you want to actually sew over the side panels that have already been put in place. So you're not just stitching along the design this time, along the linen, but you're stitching along the side panels, which is the purple fabric. And once you've done that, turn it over to the right side and then very carefully iron everything nice and flat. And then you can go ahead and trim off all those excess corner pieces there and make sure everything lines up nicely. So these next few photos show the batting that I was going to place in between my front and back panels and it was this, at this stage that I realised that I wasn't going to go ahead with that and um, not put it in between. Should you wish to still do that um, I can totally recommend having a look on YouTube there are a lot of tutorials on there on how to do a quilted wall hanging and 
the biggest tip that I got from that was to make sure that your batting piece is bigger than your front design, as you can see here, and then also your back backing fabric, that that's bigger again. Because obviously when you're sewing that batting, it can move and it's just so much easier in the process if the pieces are bigger and then you can cut them back down to size afterwards. So next step is the actual wall hangings themselves. If you are following along in this video purely to make a cushion, then you don't need to worry about this step at all. But for those of you that are interested in seeing how a wall hanging is made, this is the extra process that's involved. First of all, I recommend having a good look at your design and determining how many wall hanging loops you think your piece needs. I originally started out planning on three, as you can see in this picture here, and you can see the two off to the side have already been stitched and the one off on the left has been stitched and turned inside out. And then once I saw the thickness of that when it was finished, I realised that three was going to look a little bit small for the design. So it was at that stage that I decided to add an extra one and create a four loop wall hanging and I'm much happier with that. So for the wall hangings, um, again, you're going to need to figure out what sort of thickness you want. And again, this all depends on the actual size of your finished design. The bigger the size, it will probably look better if the wall hangings are a little bit wider or at the very least, you will need more of them. But for mine, I actually decided I wanted a two inch width for my wall hangings. And by two inches, I mean two inches finished. So therefore I needed to cut the width two inches plus a quarter of an inch on each side for my seam allowances. So they had to be two and a half inches wide in my case. So whatever you decide you want your finish width to be, add on your seam allowance for both sides and that will be your width measurement. For the length, you need to just allow enough to obviously hang over the dowel or whatever it is that you're hanging it over. Always make sure that you're gonna have enough material to go over that and then allow a seam allowance on each end as well for the sewing process. In my case, my um, wall hanging loops were five inches long and by the time my quarter of an inch seam allowance on each end was accounted for, I ended up with a four inch long loop but then that's halved because it, as it's hanging, you've got half on the front and half on the back of the dowel. So I have two inches on the front and two inches, sorry, that's not right, two and a quarter inches on the front and two and a quarter inches on the back. So go ahead and cut as many of those as you require in the measurements that you've decided on. Make sure that before you sew them, you have the fabric with the right sides together. Sew along each side, um, unless you've cut them on a fold, then you only need to sew one side, and in which case you only need to allow for one seam allowance. Um, my strips were not cut on the fold, so I had to sew each side, um, give them a bit of a press, and then turn them inside out. Next step is to position your hangings on the front of your design. Fold them over so that you have both lots of raw edges up against the raw edge of your border. So if you look at the photo here, the very, very top of the purple fabric, where the loops are positioned, each edge of the raw side of the loops is also positioned against the raw side of that fabric. Now, really take your time at this point because you wanna make sure that they're evenly spaced and that you're happy with the positioning of them because once you've sewn it all together, the only way to change their positioning is to unpick all your sewing and do it again. And we don't like doing that. So take the time, measure them out, get a ruler, and make sure you're really happy with the positioning of them. And at this stage, if, if it doesn't look, look, look right, you can take one of the hangings off, decide that three is enough, or add an extra hanging And you also need to make sure that they are all evenly placed along the top edge of your strip there because otherwise 
your loops will all be hanging unevenly on your dowel or whatever it is that you're hanging your wall hanging on. So make sure that they're all pinned up nice and level at the top of that fabric and maybe even get a tape measure out and make sure that each one measures the same length from that edge of fabric. Next step is to cut your back piece of fabric if you haven't already done so. I did this by just laying my design flat on my fabric and then using it as a template and cutting around it. And then I just pinned it all in place obviously right sides together so this picture is showing you the back of the design and on the inside is the right sides of both my materials as well as the wall hanging loops they're actually sandwiched inside those two pieces of fabric if you look carefully at the top of the photo you can see the four pins and each pin is holding those wall hanging loops in place and then starting from this the, the bottom of the design so around the whole design with a quarter of an inch seam allowance again you can alter that to whichever seam allowance you prefer and being careful as you sew across the top where those wall hanging loops are the material is going to be quite thick there so take your time that step so that you don't break any needles and then heading back around to where you began but leave an opening there and this is how it will look on the other side of the design once it's all stitched around the edge. And then turn the whole thing inside out and give it a nice press. And hopefully everything will be in a nice place. As you can see here, my, my side panels aren't as wide as I would have liked them to have been. If you can imagine the bias binding around the edge, it would have just given that a, a little bit of extra width that would have been nice. And then all that's left to do is hand sew that opening at the bottom closed. And at this stage, if you're following this tutorial to make a cushion, before hand sewing that closed, you would actually use that opening to stuff your wadding inside. And make sure you push out the corners, obviously, of the design. Um, I recommend using a chopstick, nothing too sharp because you don't want to pierce your fabric. And then once you're finished, then you can hand sew the opening closed. And you're all done. And here's my wall hanging here on my lovely little hanger that I managed to pick up at a garage sale. And I'm really, really happy with the whole, how the whole thing turned out. As I mentioned, I'll write the instructions down below for you. And if you have any questions or comments, on this tutorial please leave a message down below and I will reply as soon as possible. Thanks for watching everyone, have a great day, bye.